Thomas, your position over the years has changed according to the coach that you've been working under, according to the system. What would you say your role is on the pitch right now? Yeah, the, the role of, of normally any player changes during the times, uh, during a season, during a game, um, especially um, yeah, the, 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 the style of the coaches changed as well. I think uh, 20 years uh, ago uh, it was not that detailed than now. So. Uh, every coach on this level tries to uh, adapt the positions in centimeters maybe sometimes. Uh, so for sure uh, everything uh, changed a little bit, but in general I, w I were always an, an offensive player. Uh, I, I tried always to find uh, really direct way uh, to the opponent's goal. Uh, I always, especially after I had Hermann Gerland in the second team, I was always uh, working hard or working maybe harder than a normal offensive player because uh, yeah, when you did not work hard, hard with Hermann Gerland, he is behind you. Uh, <laughs> with the whip in the yeah, hand. Yeah, with the whip in the hand. <laughs> um, so I know what you mean, but um, yeah, for me, I, tr I try to be in my spaces. Uh, I like to be. and. and uh, for sure, you have to adapt to your uh, players next to you. Um, you have to watch out for for the, the, their strength and the, their weakness points uh, to to set up for them uh, maybe in the, in their best way. Uh, and that's that's all the time the same. But in the end, I I started maybe with players. They are really ball dominant with uh, Ribéry and, and Robin, um, so I had a, a little bit more a passive role, um, a little bit more a running, a running space interpreter role. Raumdeuter. Uh, yeah, Raumdeuter. Uh, when when my, my players in my team changed from, from Ribéry, Robin to uh, Kingsley Coman to Serge Gnabry to Robert Lewandowski, it changed a little bit that they are players also they, they want to shoot on the goal they, they want maybe the ball also in the last third they, they are not that ball dominant maybe Kingsley is very ball dominant but um, yeah my role changed a little bit to set up a little bit more than to um, be myself the, the, the goal scorer do you see things in terms of position when because from the outside we're like, okay, someone is playing in the number 10 position today. Someone is playing out wide. But as a player, from, from what you've just described, are you just putting it into the terms of how can I stress the opponent as much as possible? For sure, that's always in your mind, but you always stick to your plan, your coach made for your team and for yourself. So that's also not every game the, different, uh, the, the same plan. So for example, um, everybody before the season said, okay, uh, for the number 10, Musiala or Müller, or who is the number 10 of Bayern. Uh, for sure, we are players, love to play in the center, but Jamal and me as well, in different kind of games, we play different positions, not really the classical number 10. So it depends also uh, what, what Julian Nagelsmann prepared for us to be uh, perfectly prepared for the, for the opponent. How has your role changed off the pitch, would you say, with the years that have gone by? What was the point where you started to feel, I am now taking on more authority, more senior mm, I status think, in the uh, dressing room? In the beginning, for sure, you try to play your role, you try to uh, be happy to be on the pitch and healthy and you have to uh, watch out that everything is going good. But uh, then maybe in, the, in, in my early 20s, um, I had a good connection to the captains, uh, to very important players in the, in the beginning, uh, Mark van Bommel, uh, then Philipp Lahm, Bastian Schweinsteiger uh, and, and the important players. I, I played a good role in the important games, so you have good connections to these guys uh, and for sure uh, year by year 
you are more involved in, in team discuss discussions and so on and you try to involve your team also not only on the pitch with your actions but also ne next to the pitch uh, but, and, and in the years it, it gets more and more or you get more responsibility for the for the whole group um, yeah maybe and now and then maybe since last year or this year and maybe next year uh, this role is also a little bit changing to, to waiting for the next guys coming up uh, to take more responsibility so uh, now maybe I'm, I'm on the way to reduce uh, again the responsibility because I'm not every game 19 minutes on the pitch uh, right now um, so so the younger guys have to have to step up how is that for you to oh, it's a normal way of it's a normal way of life I try to uh, be the, the, the best help and the best buddy for them uh, in all circumstances and um, yeah and, and uh, we do everything and, and uh, I do everything that my club and my team is um, successful and yeah sometimes it, it works out uh, better than <laughs> in other games yeah. uh, especially in uh, the year 2023 is a little bit uh, roller coaster for us uh, it's up high and, and also lows Mm, yeah, we we're, we're working, working on it. How do you explain the roller coaster, and why that's why it's been like that? Yeah, we, I I think it's not necessary to explain. It's necessary for us to uh, to figure out. Maybe we find for ourselves an explanation, a clear explanation. We can cancel or change, but uh, I think it's it's not necessary to to explain. <laughs> what I think in front of the uh, of the camera, it's it's important that we uh, try to play our our very good games week in and week out. But uh, okay, every team wants that, and sure. very less teams uh, can do it <laughs> consistently. Sure. Well, it's it's just from the outside. It's surprising to see when you look at the performance against PSG, particularly in the second half, and then you think, okay, the team has turned the corner and then the, the game against Leverkusen. Yeah, okay, but that's uh, maybe the, if the fault is the expectation. Okay. <laughs> when there is a surprise, there is always a gap between expectation and reality. Sure, sure. Uh, may, maybe... Yeah, I don't know. The expectations come from the last 10 years, though, because you guys have been pretty good. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> our, our, uh, our goal and, and our, our must, must do is, is to win the, the German Bundesliga title, for sure. Uh, that's that's also clear for us, and uh, the pressure is on now. And the next game uh, against Dortmund, uh, I think you have prepared a lot of questions about uh, uh, the Klassiker. Oh, you're sure. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, yeah. When when the season starts again in 2023, um, the circumstances were different. So now we uh, yeah, made, made our own problem a little bit, um, now we have to solve it, so that, that's the thing to do. <laughs> Is there anything that you've been enjoying more as you've got older as a player? I know that yeah, saying older here is, uh, is, is relative. No problem. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. You're also getting older as a journalist. <laughs> no, no more, yes. The jacket is maybe uh, from 15 years ago, but uh, the, fa the face oh. not. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. No problem. <laughs> you join Ed and Terzic on that side. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, are there things that you enjoy more that you do now than you did as a younger player? Ah, oh, then. All no, all no. I, we, are, we are always on the hunt to, to, to this feeling when you are successful mm. and, and this didn't change uh, in my opinion. So as you said before, uh, these moments when, when you win it at home against uh, PSG, uh, all the guys in the stadium are cheering, uh, that's the moments you, you train for and um, so the setup for the Klassiker is very good for, to get these emotions again. So, but we have to, to still uh, piece of work for that.
Your record at home against Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga is incredibly strong. 31 goals scored in the last seven home games against them. How do you explain that kind of a run? I don't, I don't know. Okay, for sure, um, Borussia Dortmund is uh, always and was always a team uh, wants to play offensive football, have very good offensive players. So in the end, it's uh, quite normal that maybe there are a lot of goals in these kind of games. Um, yeah, for sure, this record sounds pretty good. Um, it felt also very good in the last years, but um, yeah, we, we want to continue. But uh, when you when you look at Dortmund right now, yeah, they, they had very very good results. They get less goals against them, so yeah, we, we will see what will happen. If you had to explain Bayern against Dortmund, the classica, to an outsider, how would you put it? For an outsider, dear outsider, watch it, watch it, and then you can see it. Now it's a very intense football match of the two biggest clubs in Germany uh, and we are waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> How is it to go from being the hunted to being the hunter? <laughs> How it is in, in the first moment it's a bad feeling because when you get from <laughs> the hunted position to the hunter you uh, need a defeat. <laughs> right. And that happened last Sunday. And yeah, this kind of feeling the first three days after that was, was uh, very bad. You think a lot about it. And um, yeah, when we start again next, next week for the preparation for the Classic, uh, uh, we talk about it, what, uh, what we can adapt maybe, or what we can change a little bit, small details, and then we have to go for it. And then as I said, with our fans in the Allianz Arena, with these kind of games in our mind, like uh, PSG. So we are used to perform mm. under pressure, mm. but um, there's no guarantee. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that, but, but that's important sure. to feel not safe, to feel, to have these kind of emotions sure. in your stomach. So yeah, the, the importance of this game is uh, maybe much, much higher than maybe in the last years uh, because of the situation. The history of this game, because Bayern have had many rivals over yeah. the history of the Bundesliga. Yeah, but the last, my, my rival, my real rival was Borussia Dortmund in my career because they are the only team they, they could compete with us, uh, not every year, but um, in the most most years, they, they were our biggest competitor, and, and in in the beginning of my Bundesliga career, okay, I had the title 2010, but then uh, 2011 and 2012, they yeah, they, we had big problems with them. What was that like? Because did that create the fire that? Abby, you're a friend of explanations. I <laughs> <laughs> I recognize, I say, for you, I say yes, okay. <laughs> that we can handle it very quickly. No, I don't know, but for sure, uh, this, I think um, Uli Hoeneß said it before, this um, big defeat in the, in the cup final, I think it was 2012, we lost 5-2, so it was not just a, a win for Dortmund, it was, okay, they, they blamed us. Mm. and. I think then uh, we started, okay, we, 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 we get Robert Lewandowski, we get Mario Götze from them. Um, also Mats Hummels, my friend, uh, in, in the upcoming years. So I think uh, we started uh, to attack them, not only on the pitch, uh, also off the pitch. And yeah, in the, in the next years we did, we did better than them. What were your most memorable moments of this rivalry for you? Yeah, for sure. My, uh, one of my, my biggest games or most important games in my career was the uh, Champions League final in Wembley. Um, yeah, that, that was the, the, the biggest game against them. And also very close. 
I think we in the first 15 minutes uh, they were the better team. After that, I think we took over, but uh, in the end it was was really close. What do you remember of the real fire of this rivalry? Because back in that time, it, yeah, it was yeah. always you always felt also as a player that when this game is upcoming. Uh, not only the league, also the internationals, uh, maybe like you, uh, the ESPN, is interested in that kind of games. And uh, I think um, it, it was always a football festival, it never were boring games, uh, always yeah, with classy players, um, or both teams had in, in this time Really big players, uh, for sure, when a big player in Dortmund is most of the time, a few years later, a big player in another really big team in Europe. So when you see the, the, the great talents they um, developed, Dembele, uh, Aubameyang, mm -hmm. Haaland, Sancho and so on and so on. So they, they had a lot of very good players. Um, and you need for, for big games, you need big players. When it comes to the reverse fixture, that was unbuying like to see you concede, you guys concede a late equaliser. How, how was that to, to take? And does that play a role in this game at all? The, the, the whole season, uh, we, see, we saw and, and, and we feel that we have these kind of games that we know that we are not unbeatable mm. and that's not a good feeling but that's the reality and we have to, ha we have to handle with it so we also had the experience also in these seasons uh, this season w with games we had very good performance uh, when you look at our Champions League season we have played eight games against big names, against big teams. Uh, we conceded only two goals in eight games. We played against Inter uh, Nazionale uh, Milan. We played against Barcelona two times. We played against uh, PSG two times. And we conceded this goal only in one match uh, in Victoria Pilsen. So you can see the potential when maybe the pressure is on, what we are able to, to show, but um, it's not sure that we show it every every time again, but we know what we are able to do, and, and that's a good feeling. And maybe we can talk after the classic. Uh, <laughs> maybe I, has, I have some explanations for you. <laughs> you know why I ask? Yeah. It's, why? I, I don't. Well, I, I don't expect that it explains everything. It's more that you're somebody who, in your interviews after games, you're somebody who's able to get to the point pretty quickly and talk about things which, to my eye, seem complicated on the pitch, but put them into understandable language. That's why I ask. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we are not uh, in some kind of games and in some kind of minutes in these games. We are not that sharp than we are in, in the, maybe the bigger stage uh, games in, in the Champions League. Maybe. I think it's not because my problem is uh, when I say this, it's sometimes interpreted uh, as a mental. Okay, it's a little bit mental mm. because maybe we make different uh, difference between these kind of games. But uh, when we are honest to ourselves, uh, when we look at this game at the classic, uh, it's one of these kind of games we normally perform. So we have to be there. But, but in the next weeks, uh, the April is. Unbe unbelievable uh, for us. We have uh, cup against uh, Freiburg. Also, Freiburg, very good team, uh, team in, in Germany. Uh, we play against Dortmund. We uh, play two times against Manchester City, and we have to play in the Bundesliga. Mm. And there is um, nothing to lose. <laughs> so, so yeah, the pressure is on, and maybe after April we can, we can talk about it if we are a team to be remembered or not. This this game against Dortmund, a title decider? Will you come with could me on be, that? May, uh, could be. But 
Yeah, it's only one game where we, I think we have nine left. Mm -hmm. One out of nine. No, seems not like a decider, but um, seems like a, gives us the, the direction, maybe. I know the word you're looking for, Richtungsweisen. Yeah, right? I know, yeah. I'm, try I'm trying to think of what the equivalent yeah, of that is in yeah. English. <laughs> That, that's the advantage in German. Sometimes there's exact yeah, words okay, that I know. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, right. But in English, it's like we're not as advanced a yeah, language. Yeah, okay, sometimes. okay. It shows us the, the direction of the next weeks. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, the weather vein, I guess, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, you mentioned Manchester City. First competitive game against yes. Pep Guardiola. I was waiting left. for that a long time. <laughs> have a long time. And, but also not, <laughs> because I, I played in, uh, in in his teams three years, and I did not have the feeling that the opponent teams were very happy <laughs> to play against Pep teams. Uh, okay, you you can be successful for sure. You can beat uh, everybody, and City has also very good players. But um, the style of the Pep teams means a lot of running for the opponent's team. Okay, okay, I, today I trained, yesterday I trained very hard with our fitness guru, uh, Olga Broich, so maybe I'm good prepared for running. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there are teams, maybe it makes more fun mm. to play against. But um, as you mentioned before, uh, in these kind of games, this season we were very sharp, we were very good in the performance, we were very good in the results, so we are confident, but we all, all know and we played uh, City in, in the uh, pre-season, we, we all know when, when City is on a run, it also uh, yeah, means that you have to suffer during the game, maybe more than five minutes. <laughs> did, did working under Pep Guardiola alter the way that you saw things as a player? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Every day uh, you are influenced by these guys are around you and, and Pep is a strong influencer. Um, and he shows you a lot. A lot of... Yeah, he shows you a lot and you, I, I was always open-minded and say, okay, um, I try to pick that what I think is helping me or is helping the team. Uh, and um, yeah, the kind of positioning um, the kind of preparation of an attack and uh, the clear thing what is in my mind is, is the, the discipline. Uh, the discipline of his teams are better than in all teams I played and I, I don't mean the discipline okay uh, be every time on the minute it's also an important part but the discipline on the pitch of the movements, of the defenders, of the whole team, um, on the ball and off the ball. And um, that's, that's very important too. Uh, when you see our, our records, uh, we did not receive um, um, maybe 20 goals per season with Pep. And um, yeah, that's remarkable. And facing Erling Haaland again? Mr. Ah, he's, he, he's an unbelievable striker. Um, but in a team like, like Dortmund, we, we talked about it, he had no chance against us in the last years. So, um, <laughs> a funny story, in the preseason um, we lost against City 1-0 and after the game he, we talked uh, a few seconds and he said, finally, finally he beat us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens uh, yeah, in, in a few sure. weeks. Uh, the national team, you've been a, uh, I was going to say prägende, mm. yeah. but a, you've been a leading figure in the national team for, for many years. When I heard you give the interview you gave to German TV uh, after the Costa Rica game, I thought he was going to retire and yet you haven't yet. Yeah, that, that's... What's, what's, What's your thinking? How do you see the situation? I had uh, the feeling that I, 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 in the first moment of this interview, I shared my thoughts about the game and, uh, and I answered the questions. And in the end, uh, your colleague 
asked me about my personal situation and, and then I thought maybe I um, want to share my, my thoughts. Uh, oh, for sure I was influenced by the, the stadium and the emotions there and uh, but in the end I, I said nothing I said something uh, special but nothing unrealistic I, I said if if this is this was my last game I, I wanted to say thank you and, and that I enjoyed the journey um, because after such a moment you don't know how the future yeah, will be and in the end I, I, I did not retire but uh, because I uh, I think it's not very respectful to say egoistic okay I retire when you're not retiring it does not mean okay I have to be there because uh, I was the last 10 years there but uh, I, I want to give my, my uh, national coach always mm, the possibility and, and the chance that he can call me and I say, okay, I come. I, uh, the German national team is not there for my personal um, goals or to have a, a good time. I am there for the German team if they want to, need, uh, if they want to use me as, as a player with my, uh, all my attributes, positive uh, and negative. Um, but um, yeah, and and that what's uh, what's going on, and, and uh, that was my thoughts after it, and, and during this interview, yeah, for sure, it was emotional, a little bit less of thinking. Your former international teammate Meza Özil yes. retired yesterday. What was it like to play with? Him? It was nice. It was nice. I had a good connection with him. Um, yeah, we we were the the upcoming young young guns at this time. It was it was an unbelievable uh, good time for sure. When you look back and you try to remember, you maybe only remember the good things. Uh, but in the end, we we had uh, my journey in the national team with Mesut uh, starts 2010. So our uh, I started in March, uh, the World Cup. 2010 was not only for me uh, very special, also Mesut had a, had a great performance there. Uh, and since that moment, uh, yeah, we, we started to, um, yeah, till 2013, uh, 2014 with the World Cup. Okay, uh, also 2018, uh, Mesut and I uh, were in the team, but I think the, the first years, um, yeah, we had a, a perfect energy on, on the pitch. Uh, he was also a player for the give and go. He was uh, a player who set you up perfectly. So I enjoyed it a lot to, to play with him. Uh, we had, I remember one game, I think it was a friendly game against uh, the Netherlands in Hamburg. Um, that was for the German football. Um, maybe not a milestone, is a little bit too much, but it, it, yeah, and, and, and it was an outstanding moment because we we played such a good football that was we are not used to play that dom dominant against a team from the Netherlands so uh, and, and I remember that really good at a time uh, where at Bayern we are not in the in the in the best shape um, yeah but to 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 combine with him, with Toni Kroos, uh, Miro Klose, at this time, uh, yeah, we had a great connection on the pitch. So, Mesut, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I, I hope uh, we see you soon or I, I, we can come together. Somebody else who you played with quite successfully yes. is a man called Bastian Schweinsteiger. Yeah, he's part. He's going to be part of our ESPN coverage. Yes. Nowadays he's called the White Fox. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah, the white because of the color of his hair. Okay. And the fox because um, uh, <laughs> no, he's not called the White Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, could you complete the sentence? Bastian Schweinsteiger is. But you might have done that already. Yeah. No, I, I have a good relationship with him. Um, yeah, in, in summer, 
we get together once to, to play golf. Um, he's um, sometimes he, he's in in my area. He, he's love. Uh, he like to to ski a lot in the winter. Okay, skiing is for me is maybe not the best idea at the moment. <laughs> or buying generally, it's a bit of a sensitive topic. Sure, but, but um, yeah, we we are very good good friends. Where does the sense of humour come from? Just finally, because everyone is always commenting. I the, whenever they see one of your videos. Was yeah, we are we are very. Uh, I think we are both positive. No, but you personally, you personally, just the the sense of humour that you have and yeah. that you radiate as well is something that I'm always hearing people comment about. Like, was that always since a very young age for you that you were always making jokes just to lighten the mood? I, we, I have to ask my mother maybe about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I was always, uh, yeah, I was open-minded and I always come, try to talk a lot with, with my guys and, and try to have as much fun as I, I can have in, during a day. For sure, in the, in the former days, I just need to play football all day long to have uh, fun. <laughs> now maybe, I don't know, but maybe yes, yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had no um, uh, boot camp to sure. learn it, so uh, <laughs> I think it was it's naturally. <laughs> I think so as well, so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.